Welcome back. This is lesson eight of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session 10. And in this lesson, we will configure EKS, which is a Kubernetes cluster from AWS. And we will deploy everything we did so far to this EKS cluster. In the previous lesson, what we did is we deployed TensorFlow Serving Model and we deployed a gateway service to local Kubernetes cluster that we created with Kind. This is like a lightweight Kubernetes cluster for local experiments. We experimented with this. We created a deployment and service for both TensorFlow model and for the gateway. Now we have these files. So we have this gateway deployment, gateway service, model deployment, and model service. And now we want to deploy these YAML files to EKS cluster. First, let's go to our AWS console and look for EKS here, Elastic Kubernetes Service. And I don't have any clusters here. Uh, we can create a cluster using the web interface, using the AWS console. But instead of doing this, we will use a tool called AKS CTL. So this is a CLI tool for Amazon AKS. We will use that for creating an AKS cluster. So let's download that. I'm trying to find a link here for downloading. Oh, let me just AKS CTL download. And then the, the first link I have is from AWS Docs, which is actually what I was looking for. And yeah, so for Linux, we will need this thing here. So let me download this file. I will again install it to home directory slash bin. I'm in a home directory now. So I go to this slash bin folder. Remember that this bin folder is on the path means that when I write Docker Compose or Kind or kubectl, it goes to this directory and uses these executable files from this bin directory. So I will now download this AKS CTL tool to this bin folder. So it's a tar archive. To unpack it, we'll use the star command tar. So I always have problems remembering the keys. So I think it's extract the files verbose to this X is extract, then uh, Z means, I think it's like a zip archive or gzip archive, but uh, the mnemonic I remember is extract the files and the verbos. I think that's it. Yeah, now it extracted it. So let me remove the tar archive. So it's already executable. Now let me go back to our working directory. And here I will create now, let me go to Visual Studio Code. Now we want to create a cluster, EKS cluster. And for that, we can use this EKS CTL. Well, actually what we can do is do EKS CTL, then create cluster, and then configure this through command line interface. Let's say have name, zoom, come, EKS. And what I usually do is instead of doing that, I create a YAML file with configuration. So let me do it here. I'll do this in kubeconfig, EKS config YAML. Let me check if there is an example here. There is probably an example in the official website. Yeah, so here, EKS create cluster. But there is, yeah, this one is better. So we can create a cluster YAML file. Well, in our case, it's not cluster YAML, it's EKS config, but that's the same. So this is cluster config, then the name, let's call it ML zoom cam EKS. And then the region, I will use EU West one, so Ireland. And then node groups. So remember we talked about nodes. These are different nodes, but nodes can be grouped in groups. And then the nodes within a group, they all have the same configuration, the same type of instance and so on. So for example, we might want to put this TensorFlow serving deployment to a node group that has GPU machines, and then the gateway deployment to a node group that just have CPU machines. Here today, we will not use GPU computers at all. We will just use CPU usual instances. So we will have only one node group. Let's say this M5 X large is okay for us. Let me quickly check what kind of type it is actually. So I need to go to M5, M5 X large. Yeah, this one. So we'll have four CPUs and 16 gigs of memory. These are sufficiently large machines for us. Don't actually think we need two of them. We can just have, let's go with one. I'll just call it ng m5 x large. So then we know that for this node group, these are the types of machines we have. And we will create just one machine of this type. So now that's all we need to do here. Let me now go to the directory, cube config and do EKS CTL. 
then create cluster and then minus f eks config and now it will create a cluster so what i'll do in the meantime let's take a look at our deployments so for gateway deployment this is the image we used and this is a local image so now we need to take these local images and publish them to ECR. And ECR, if you remember, this is container registry for AWS. And if we want to use um, our images, they need to be either publicly available through Docker Hub or we need to put them to our ECR. So we will put them to our ECR. I will follow the same process as, as we did last week when we were creating a repository for our Lambda. So I will use AWS CLI, AWS uh, ECR, and create the repository and then the repository name will be model serving what is the name of the cluster let me just call it this way ml zoom camp images for example okay this is the repository uri let me copy it and i'll do the same thing as i did last time in our server last week or to count id this is this thing i'll put it here this account id then this is our region. So put the region here. And this is our registry name. So this would be our prefix. And now we need to publish to ECR two things. We have two images. We have this gateway image. And then we have this exception image. So now what we need to do is we need to tag these local images with a remote tag. Docker tag local name. So let me uh, like get way local this would be this thing and gateway the remote one will be prefix and then this long name so zoom cam 10 gateway minus 002 take the local image with uh, this remote tag let me execute this whole thing now and we want to do the same with the model so model local the name is this one model remote is we have prefix and then this thing i'll just replace colon with minus and then we do docker tag and replace gateway local with model local and gateway remote with model remote so we execute that and now we need to push these images to ecr and for that remember we need to first log in to our ecr yeah i'll use the same command as before aws ecr get login with email you see this warning, there are other ways of logging in more secure. I usually use this way. Uh, maybe it's not the best one. So you can check how to do this correctly. But we now logged in and now we just need to push. So let me type it here first, docker push. And then we have model remote. We'll push the model first and then we'll push gateway remote. So now let me execute this thing first. And now let me execute this thing. Cool, everything is pushed. Now we need to take the URI of these images that we just pushed and put them to our deployment configuration. So let me just output this. So we have a gateway remote. So this is the image URI of our gateway service. So I'm just taking this, what we have here, and replacing it with this long name. And I hit save. And then let me open model deployment. And we need to do the same thing. So here we have this image. Now we need to replace it with the image from ECR. Model remote. So this is the name of the image. This is the URI of the image, which I put here. And I save it. So now let's check if the cluster is created. It's still being created. So let's wait a bit. It might take up to 15 minutes. Yeah, so it's not super fast. Took quite some time. 20 minutes. Yeah, so it takes some time. Be patient. And I think one thing I didn't mention is actually when you create EKS cluster, it is not covered by the free tier. So you actually have to pay money for that. It's not free. You pay for the instances that EKS uses as nodes, and then you pay for the actual cluster itself. You can find out more about pricing if you just go to Google and type you know, EKS pricing. Now we have EKS and one thing it says here that kubectl command should work. Now let's do this. kubectl get notes. I think we didn't talk about this, but kubectl get notes gives us information about notes. 
So the node we have is exactly the node coming from EKS. So this is not a node that is running locally with kind. I think we still have it. If I do Docker PS, yeah, so we have the node that kind deployed. We have it locally, but kubectl is already configured to work with EKS. Okay. So we are already in the cube config folder. This is this folder with all these configurations. So what we want to do is we want to apply all these config files. We will start with uh, the model. First, we will apply the config for the deployment for the model, then for the service for the model, then we will apply with the deployment for the gateway, and finally, we will apply the service for the model. So let's start. kubectl apply minus f model deployment. Then let me also do model service. And I'll do kubectl get port to see what's going on there. So the model is already running there. And if I do kubectl get service, I get this uh, TensorFlow serving clothing model. What I can do is I can also do port forwarding now, but now this time the port will be forwarded not from our local Kubernetes cluster, but from a remote cluster. Let me find this. I will use this command. This command does port forwarding for the TensorFlow serving service. Let's do that. Okay, it's working. And let me see what we have actually in our gateway. So in our gateway, yeah, we can use it for testing things locally. So let me run it now. And Python gateway. No, it seems to work. But now this time, instead of sending a request to a pod running locally, it sends a request to a pod running in EKS. Cool. So the next thing we want to do is deploy a gateway deployment and then the service. So kubectl apply minus f gateway deployment and gateway service. So now let's do kubectl get deployment out of get pod. I want to see what are the pods. So the pod for the gateway is running there. And now I want to get service. And you see now, we have this long URL. So external IP, uh, in case of kind, you remember it was pending, but here we actually have a URL and the type of slot balancer. And then we have this thing. So let me quickly use Telnet to see if something is running there on 18th port and listening. It's not, but it yeah, probably it will take maybe one minute or so. But this is a DNS name. This DNS update needs to be propagated through the internet. Let me try to run it once more. Yeah, you know, while we're waiting, what we can do is just do port forwarding and check that things work. Port forward gateway, do 8080 to just 80. Let me do Python test. It is quite fast. So let's wait now till the changes propagate and we are able to access the DNS name. Okay, now it is up and running. We can access it using this URL. We send something and then it says, okay, I do not know what to do with this. And yeah, it closed the connection. So what we need to do now is we need to get this URL and go to our test file. And let me comment this. Now the new URL will be this long URL. Let me add also add HTTP at the beginning. Then this long, long, long URL and then slash predict. So this will be the URL of our service. And let me run it one more time. Now we are actually sending a request to this URL. So this is our service, which is a load balancer. And this load balancer acts as a entry point to our service. And then it forwards the request to the pod. Yeah. So it makes this whole thing. The flow is like that. So it gets to the gateway. Gateway sends the request to our internal service. Then internal service sends it to the pod. And then it travels back with uh, the response. And then finally, we here get the predictions, get the response. Yeah, that's cool. We can actually see if we go to our AWS console. First, we can see our EKS cluster there. This is the cluster. And then we can also go to EC2. So this is EC2 panel. And then in EC2, I have two EC2 instances here, two EC2 machines. So the first one is the one I use to do all these things. I'm on this machine right now. So this is where the terminal is running. And then the second one 
is this node that we created on EKS. So that's one of the nodes for EKS. And we can also find load balancers. So let's go to load balancers. And then yeah, we have one load balancer. And this is exactly the load balancer we used for querying our service. When we did kubectl apply and our service, because the type of this service was load balancer, it went to AWS and created Elastic Load Balancer. This is the Load Balancer, and this is actually the name. You can see it. So this is the name we used for querying our service. Yeah. So this makes it quite convenient for us to deploy models with Kubernetes, so we don't need to worry about many things. AWS takes care of that. So one thing, though, that I didn't mention is now this Load Balancer is open for everyone. So everyone who has this TNS name can send the request to our EKS cluster. So oftentimes you don't want to do this. You don't want to open your services to everyone in the world. You want to restrict it. And actually we need to do the same thing as we would do with, for example, the Lambda function we did in the previous session or in session five when we were deploying a model using Elastic Beanstalk. So in all these cases, we would need to take some extra care to make sure that only people who need to have access to this thing can access this thing and not anyone else. This is out of the scope for this course, but there is a lot of information about that. And probably if you are in a company and you use this thing, there are people who know AWS uh, well, just talk to them and ask what is the best way of doing that. What I want to do now is I want to stop the AKS cluster and use this AKS CTL. The command is delete cluster, and then I give a name. What was the name? Let me check. We have it in EKS config. So the name is ML Zoom Camp EKS. And then let's delete it because it actually costs money. So better delete it if we don't use it. What will happen, it will also delete the EC2 instances and it will also delete the load balancer. I don't know what these messages are, but it also takes a bit of time to delete the cluster. So let's just wait a bit and then it should delete the cluster. It took a bit of time, like three, four minutes. So now it finished. All the resources are deleted. We can actually check it. So the load balancer should be gone now. Yeah, we don't have it. Then if we go to instances, I should have only one instance. It still shows it, but it's terminated. So soon it will be gone from this list as well. And if we go to EKS, there is nothing as well. So if we go to a list of clusters, it's not showing us anything because there are no clusters. We deleted the cluster. That's actually all we wanted to cover in this lesson. So in this lesson, we took the config files we prepared previously, and we used this config to deploy our application to AKS cluster. And for that, for deploying, first we created a cluster using AKS CTL, and we also published the Docker images that we had to ECR. We needed to change the configuration a little bit to point to the new location for the images, but that was pretty much all we needed to do. And here, plus thing I had here, configuring kubectl. Actually, we didn't need to configure. AKS CTL took care of that for us. So yeah, we didn't even need to do this thing here. So that's it for the lesson. That's it for the session. So in the next video, I'll just summarize everything we learned. So see you soon.